I'm your mama, I'm your daddy, I'm that nigga in the alley. I'm your doctor when the need, want some coke, have some weed. You know me, I'm your friend, your main boy, thick and thin. I'm your pusher man. I'm your pusher man. <laughs> Let's start the show. We've been cleared for takeoff. You're very productive. I'm trying to be. You're very productive. I don't know why you don't think you're productive or trying to be productive. No, trying to be productive. Everybody's productive. No, not everybody's productive. At this table, at this desk. Okay. All right, the short desk. The short desk. Everybody's productive. John, you're productive, right? Yeah. He's being productive on this phone right now. Oh man, look at him. He's got his Matrix shades on. Mm-hmm. I thought he had a hangover when he came in. <laughs> <laughs> Morpheus. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I think that's what you were yeah. looking for. Yeah. And I tried, I couldn't figure I, I didn't remember his name. He said Neo at first, but yeah. 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 Welcome to the Short Disc Podcast. Uh, we are your hosts, John, Drew, and Keith. We are here for episode 21. Uh see. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir, for season one, episode twenty-one. We've got Drew. He's got his, he's got his head wrap on. So you know he's gonna. I don't. I don't know. I get confused sometimes when you don't have the head wrap on. I don't know if you're militant because sometimes you come across as more militant with it off, but then when you have it on, there's times when you come off more militant. So I'm just. I'm confused. I just don't know which one I'm gonna get. I'm not a militant individual. Whatever you say. Um. John, you look good. You know, you came in here with the shades, even Stop though, down. you know, yeah, it really is. It really is. I, I like that. Man, can I tell you something? I went out of town. I gained eight pounds. Came back, I lost five. So <laughs> I'm trying to get it back together. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, hey, man, when I traveled, man, we just enjoyed ourselves. We ate. That's what it's about. That was the South Carolina trip, right? Yeah. Yeah. Myrtle Beach. Um, and you were there for how long? How many days? Uh, four days. You gained eight pounds. Well, that whole week, I gained seven days. I gained eight pounds because I just, I just let loose. Food on vacation always is better than when you're home. It certainly is. Uh, yes and yes and no. I I, I had a couple of places disappoint me there. Mm. Um, but I did go to a place. Posted pictures of. No, the one that I posted pictures of with the the waffle and that was a good place. Johnny D's Waffles. It was pretty damn good. But there was a place that I went. We went to a steakhouse called T-Bones or T-Bones or something like that. And we thought it would be very good, but it was very disappointing. But I don't know if that is a result of us having going to that burn steakhouse in Tampa. That was so good. Speaking of, I am going to do a thing for my birthday there. I would like for you gentlemen to come. I will gladly go. please uh, <laughs> send me the invite. Um, um, I'm going to make the room. was creepy, creepy with the red velvet. Yes, the, the creepier creepy rooms. Yeah. yeah, the room we were in when we went wasn't as creepy. But so back to the steak. Uh huh. What was wrong with it? Was it was it age steak? It was. Um, it wasn't seasoned. Things. Was it was it a place? Was it a la carte? Was it a la carte menu? It was. It was. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. It wasn't. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't a la carte. Not, not, I'm thinking of Burns again. No, it wasn't. Well, but, Burns isn't really a la carte. But they it wasn't have. like a place like um, Outback or. Um, so that's what it was. So when we looked it up on Google and, you know, I did my research because we, we, it was across the street from where we went to the Wax Museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the description made you think that it was a well-to-do steakhouse. So we dressed accordingly too. And then when we walked in, it was 
and Outback. And so I was like, ah, okay. And then we got seated and the waitress at like, she didn't want to be there. Um, and I had a, I had a ribeye. Uh, my son had a burger and my wife had um, filet mignon. And it was, it was again, the taste of burns was still in our mouth. And, but I don't think you necessarily had to go to Burns no, to figure out. You're right. Whether that that was a good quality steak or, or well, not. Well, I, I well, I guess the whole ambiance and the the uh, customer service that was given, and that was the last. You know, it was like, okay, when was the last time you had a steak? I went to a restaurant that is considered somewhat of a steakhouse. So you're going to immediately go back, and because it was so soon so you know so it wasn't so far away that we went just a week removed mm-hmm. that that was the first thing that came to my mind and my wife told me that was the first thing that came to her mind and so it was to make that comparison I think but even taking that aside right mm-hmm. taking that away yeah it, it it still was terrible it was terrible it was terrible even the sides and everything even the sides were terrible um, I actually had to send one of the sides back. They didn't really have too many sides, but I guess one of the things that they had was like rice, rice and black beans, and that was dry. I sent that back. The baked potato wasn't good. How do you mess up a baked potato? Um, wow. I don't know. So uh, were they packed? No, they weren't packed. They were they were okay, but it wasn't something that I would. I would ever recommend to anyone when they go up there is to go to that place. And maybe some people do like it. I don't know, but I know I did not like it. Uh, we did go to a seafood place mm-hmm. that, um, Kenneth had told me about, um, I can't remember the name of the place, but it was, it was actually a buffet place, but it was a very different buffet place. Um, they had crab legs that they were serving fresh. Like you would have to go up to, they had two lines for you to go up to get it from the people that were cooking it. They had a dessert bar in the back. Um, they had, you name it, they had it. They had um, fish, many, a couple of different fish fried or broiled or baked. They had some shrimp that were fried, baked, broiled. Um, they had scallops. They had sirloin steaks. They had um, chicken chicken tenders they had beef brisket they had ribs did they cook this stuff fresh like the it was the, fresh so the, the red meats did they it was fresh okay they, they were it was on a, a, no okay. no they only put so much out at a time mm-hmm. so that kept them coming with uh to replenish it and did you request the uh, temperature it's cooked or um they had it marked okay where yeah okay it was it was it was very good. I, I really, really, really enjoyed that place. I think it was Captain Captain George or something like that. Captain George Seafood, something like that. But it was very good, very very good. Um, ran across a couple of places there that I. It reminded me that South Carolina is really the South, and they are not into the what is, what are we in the twenty first century. Um. Mammy's house. I uh, saw a few of those uh, plantation house of pancakes. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't. Mammy's house. Mammy's house. Plantation house of pancakes. And you didn't frequent those. Oh, you know? what? Yeah. No. Hmm. They um, the one thing about Myrtle Beach, man, I will tell you, I've never seen a city have so many different pancake places they had donald's pancakes they had the johnny d's pancakes they had the plantation house of pancakes the mammy house was pancakes they had a pancake pancake house every quarter of a mile maybe less than that on both sides of the street it was insane i've never seen anything like that before in my life ever not an IHOP or Denny's in sight, but they <laughs> every quarter of a mile. Less than that, I would less say. than that. Yes, like fifteenth. Yes, I would say that. That many pancakes in that many 20. on this strip on this one strip. 
in this these long are mom strip. and pops, so these are um, yes, okay, small mm-hmm. businesses, small businesses. So did you see IHOP there? Or? No, I didn't see an IHOP or a Denny's at all. But they had a you name it, they had a type of house of pancakes. Okay, and it was just weird. I'm like, damn, people come up here to Myrtle Beach to eat pancakes like this on the beach. I'm at the- it was very, very odd. I had never seen anything like that before. What's their infatuation with pancakes? I don't know. I'm not complaining because I love pancakes. So I can. Mm, I'm more of a French toast. You can you can take it or leave it, right? Yeah, I, I'm more of a French toast guy. I like my French toast, but I can eat pancakes. But damn, like seriously, Donald's House of Pancakes. They had one called International. I forgot what the name of it was, but the way that they flipped it, it was IHOP, but they flipped so it they didn't to the have way. Any infringement? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I got you. It's McDonald's. <laughs> it's <laughs> McDonald's. The Golden Arch. <laughs> they do the Golden <laughs> Arches. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, it was, it was a fun time. Did you see man. McDonald's pancakes there? No, I was, okay. I was looking for it. All right. Funny that you say that. I was looking for it. Okay. Yeah, I really was. I was like, what they gonna have a McDowell pancake just pop up? It was weird, man. Um. Yeah, so the plantation house of pancakes and Mammy's house really blew me away. Um, another thing, and I and I actually had talked to Steph about this. I said, "Man, Steph, all of the black people in South Carolina are angry, like they're mad. Like I didn't I didn't come across one pleasant. Are you talking about aesthetics or just uh, be, uh, bedside manner? Bedside manner, really? Yeah, and." We had a conversation and she made me, well, if you got a plantation house of pancakes or Mammy's house and other things, would you be happy? And I said, no, I wouldn't. Okay. So it's deep seated. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So um, we had a little fun um, while we were there. The hotel stay was mediocre at best. Got my couple of my days back uh, refunded because it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. the drive was cool. You know, Isaac, he really enjoyed it. It was an experience for him. He had never been there. So he enjoyed it. We went to the little wax museum. The wax museum was terrible. But <laughs> the 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 fun part was they had underneath, they had like a, um, they had like a, a mirror maze and then a, uh, like a, a horror room thing. Like, and I thought the horror thing would be cheesy, but it wasn't. That thing was fun. Um, like, on a smaller scale house from Halloween Horror Nights, to be honest with you. Uh, then the mirror maze was fun too, because I had never really done one of those since I was a kid at the fair. Oh yeah. And uh, that was fun, but we had fun at that. And I remember the last time we went to that mirror maze over there. Yeah. 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 yeah you ran into. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do that this time. Yeah. <laughs> the, the arms was outstretched, but yeah, Man, we had so much fun. Um, and then uh, we went to the aquarium. It was a nice little aquarium they had. And then my wife and Isaac went to the beach. Um, and I actually was out there networking a little bit, telling people about the podcast. Yeah, we saw those hits. Yeah, so. About 15, 20 hits from um, Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah. thank you guys uh, that I met there and continue to listen, hopefully, to us. Um, hopefully, you like what you heard. And, um, you know, just thank you guys. But, yeah, just really, really enjoyed ourselves there. And um, it wasn't Charleston, but it was cool for what it was. Um, but, yeah, just the pancakes places. But, yeah, we had fun. So, I want to put a disclaimer out there before we get on what we're sipping on in U.S. history. They got uh, one thing that I got to really go back on and make a correction. A couple of weeks ago, we did the top 10 movie list, com- comedic movies, comedy movies. And I omitted one that should have been probably number three for me. So whatever was number three, just move it down the list and move the others down the list, knocking 10 down to honorable mentions. Number three for me was Players Club. Oh, I forgot about oh, Players oh. Club. <laughs> Stripper business happened a long time, long, long, long time ago. <laughs> Any Bernie Mac? <laughs> Any Bernie Mac? Listen, Bernie Mac in that movie. Did it? <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> ah, yeah. So Players Club was my number three. So whatever movie I had, number three, I don't remember just knocking on down the list. I had to come back and say that as I thought about, you know, what what that movie meant to me. And I came across it like uh, on, on social media. I was like, wait a minute. I forgot Players Club. I love that movie. So, yeah, that's my number three. So I just had to. <laughs> Magilla, Gorilla, Magilla, Gorilla. Well, when he went off on them, <laughs> you big, flat, ugly. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but anyways, Drew, what are we sipping on today, sir? Uh, today, I actually brought two. I bought a red and a white. Oh. Um, the red or the white actually is Alto Adeji. It's a Pinot Grigio. I bought both of these bottles at ABC, and they're both probably less than $20 a bottle. Okay. Um, Pinot Grigio is a light body white wine, ranging, um, and it always ranges in color depending on where uh, region that they're uh, grown. The grapes are grown. Okay. Um, so Pinot Grigio is typically paired with um, like chickens and fishes, uh, shellfish included, um, cheese platters, pasta dishes, and vegetables. And then the um, the uh, red that I bought is from the Biltmore States um, in South Carolina, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually was we, we we were scheduled to go to that winery, but uh, weather got real bad, so we didn't go. Um, I've actually been into, it's, it's a huge property mm-hmm. um, and then the, you know, it's a two part, you need to get the tour of the, of the, yeah. the state itself. And then after that, you go on the winery um, mm-hmm. and then do the wine tasting at the end. Um, good, good day. Um, kids were burnt out, uh, <laughs> I bet. To, you know, walking through the, the state alone. I bet. Um, but the cab, the red that I bought is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, mm. again, from the Biltmore Estates, okay. um, the cab is about, it's less than 15 bucks for that one. And then the, um, Pinot Grigio was like less than 20. Um, typically you would pair a food, um, you do like steaks, red meats with this. Spice um, meats? Spice. <laughs> <laughs> um, box of wine. Box of wine. <laughs> Uh, personally, I would pair it with again red meats, uh, grilled steaks. Um, I also enjoy this with a cigar, um, mm. a Davidoff okay. late, late hour cigar. Mm. Um, the cigar tends to enhance the flavor of the cab because um, the cigar is actually aged in Scotch barrel. Oh wow! Uh, caskets. Oh, that's a casket. The barrel, the they call it caskets. Yeah, not the lane. T- oh, I'm about to say I ain't drinking that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of cast. <laughs> I had to give you that Samuel Jackson. Yeah. Caskets, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Remember he did that in Cover to America? <laughs> what? <laughs> he, played, he played the best anchor. Player. That should be its own category. That should be. Okay. Say what again? Say what again, <laughs> motherfucker? I dare you, double dare you, mother. Say what? One more goddamn time. <sighs> so yeah, that's what I brought, man. Oh, okay. Um, Which one y'all want to try first? I chilled the uh, Pinot Grigio. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me try the. Let's try that first. Yeah, let's try that one. Hey, man. While we while you're pouring, I, I want to say that um, you know if you guys haven't already, please if you're on Instagram, follow. Um, Drew's photography page at eyes uh, underscore have underscore it E-Y-Z. you thank you yeah E Y Z man you put some um colored pictures on there pictures of color us uh, you know different from your black and white man those really popped yeah I couldn't yeah those were nice cheers brothers yeah so the yes. yeah. Oh, I like this. I can see this with some fish. Yeah. Yes. I have some shrimp with this and some fish. Maybe a crab leg or two. What type of fish? Like salmon? Yes. Even tuna. Not the bumblebee tuna. No, not bumblebee. (laughs) Listen, I don't want to be on the toilet for the rest of the day. (laughs) When you said that, you had me dying. (laughs) Yeah, this is pretty good. It's very good. 
All right, brother. So asparagus. Hit us with it. I know last week you hit us with the Black Wall Street Tulsa massacre. Um, touched on that, and again, that was episode twenty. If you guys haven't, please take a listen to that and to get some more of a visual of that. If you have not seen the HBO series The Watchmen with Regina King, please take a look at that as well. Um, what you got for us today? Well, you know, I, I share these things not to, you know, be a divisive figure or anything like that or a militant individual or, or you know, but I, I share it because we need to know because once we know we can do better. Right. Absolutely. And this is not just, you know, this is part of American history that is that is kind of tucked under the, the rug that they don't want you to know. But it's a very important that, you know, we know the good, the bad, the ugly so we can stay away from that kind of stuff again. You know, mm -hmm. we don't, re th that's the stuff that we don't want to repeat that, you know, the history that we don't want to repeat. Mm -hmm. um, but this week we're going to go touch on the Okoe massacre. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. The Okoe mm -hmm. massacre was uh, a white mob on African-American residents in Northern Okoe. They never taught about, taught this. Uh, no. And this is right down the street. Yeah. Wow. No, this is one of the things that they don't really, that Correct. they don't want taught now. And this is relevant because the race theory the, thing that was passed. Go ahead. Uh, this massacre occurred, uh, occurred on November 2nd of 1920 um, on the day of the U.S. presidential election. Uh, the town is in uh, Orange County near Orlando. Um, estimated, most estimates, a total of 30 to 35 black people were killed that day. Most African-American owned buildings and residents in Northern Accord were burned to the ground. Other African Americans living in Southern Okoye were later killed or driven out on threat of more violence. Um, Okoye essentially became an all-white town. The massacre has been described as, a, as the single bloodiest day in modern American political history. Uh, the attack was intended to prevent black citizens from voting um, in Okoye and across the state. Various black organizations had been conducted voter registration drives for that year. Uh, Black people were had essentially been defranchised in Florida since the beginning of the, the 20th century. Um, Moses Norman, a pr uh, prosperous African-American farmer, tried to vote, but he was turned away twice. White mobs surrounded the home of Julius, Julius Julie Perry, when Norman, where Norman was uh, thought to have taken refuge. After Perry drove away, the white mob with gunshots, killing two uh, men and wounding one, who tried to break into his home. The mob called for reinforcements from Orlando and Orange County. Um, the whites laid waste to uh, the African-American community in northern Okoye and eventually killed Perry. They took his body to Orlando and hung him uh, from a light post to intimidate other black people. Uh, Norman escaped, never to be found. Hundreds of African-Americans fled the town, leaving behind their homes and possessions. Most of the people living in Okoye did, uh, don't even know that this happened. Um, and I, not just living in Okoye, just in the surrounding areas, and it's not really talked about, but it's something that you know happened or occurred. Uh, so there it is. I encourage everybody to to read up on it, um, share it with you know their kids, teach them, and don't continue to sweep this kind of stuff under the rug, but educate. So we can move on from it and heal from it. Wow. That's where we're at. And just to add a little bit on that, um, I'm glad you talked about that. Uh, McCoy, if, if and this is going back to another HBO, HBO puts out some gems, you know. There's another series that came out. It's called Lovecraft Country. Um, it it's it's a black show. Um, and it talked about sundown towns. Mm. And Okoye is a sundown town. If you don't know what sundown means, I'm not going to tell you. I want you to look it up if you're listening to our podcast. Or you can just use your imagination. Um, yeah, but it, 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 it hit home when you, yeah. <laughs> when you read it. Um, just as recent, I think, as it, what? Two, three years ago? Yeah. Okoye was still labeled as a sundown town. Now we know that's not true because all of us have been in a past the sundown and we ain't been ran out of there, but 
Yeah, take a look at take a look at what a sundown town is. Close and blind shut. I don't like lightning. Turn that light on, Drew. <laughs> oh, that's sun- <laughs> take a look at what a sundown town is. Um, look it up. And what Drew just talked about, a koi uh, was a sundown town al- amongst others. So thank you for that. That's a lot, especially for local people here in Orlando. They may not have known about the Ocala massacres. That, a koi, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said Ocala. A koi massacres. I yeah, I thought, it, you know, I don't know why I always yeah. flip them like that. I always get that. Oh, Vito? I don't get a veto. A a Koi no Cala is what I always mess up. But uh, thank you for that, brother. Really, really appreciate that. And if you haven't seen Lovecraft Country, I I encourage everyone except for John to see it because we do not need him to have Mm. any more episodes of sleep paralysis because you will have it. (laughs) Because it deals with some crazy stuff. (laughs) Automatic. But very good show with Jonathan Majors. He's a great actor. And Journey Smoley. Smollett. Um, great show. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our top 10 early because I don't know how long this one's going to take. Now, Drew, you surprised us last week mm-hmm. with your top 10. You got a top 10 on this one? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> one second. This one. <laughs> Uh, I got to sprinkle my surprise. You got to sprinkle. Okay. So yeah, this is I'm the cover I'm not very versed on, on this topic. This that's, that's understandable. I'd had an all Caribbean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have one of those. We're going to have one of those. You know. of my list would have been Dylon, 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 well, well, Barry's Hammond. We're going to we're gonna have a nice little dance hall. I might, I might give you one or two here and there. Okay. I would be interested to hear what your, your dance, when we do the dance hall slash reggae, one, to, to you're gonna have to. Yeah. Yes, yes. You, your your words gonna matter more than me and John. Nah, no, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm here for moral support. So listen. So then that way, uh, I we could get the backlash from the way I want to hear what the way was saying when he hits your list. Nah, he gonna try to pull my crimson card. <laughs> You already told me I sound like somebody conscious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. This week, again, thank you guys for voting. We will be putting, well, by the time this episode drops, there'll be already a list up that we put. But thank you guys for voting. Not putting John and I through physical anguish doing this one. Maybe a little mental aerobic. Uh, well, no. I was about to say mental. No, it just, well, what do you say, John? Did, was this difficult? It wasn't for me. I thought it would be, but it wasn't. It was actually fun. Yeah. I'm going to say it's fun. Um, oh, he's got his Morpheus shades on. Drew. I got my Morpheus shades on. I, might have to, uh, Inside. I, I may have to go into witness protection, but... Um, oh, man. Afterwards. But once again, this is my list. But this was fun. Reason why it was fun is I actually um, was with my brother once again, mm-hmm. and I was having issues coming up with names. I had uh, a block... Yeah, for whatever reason, and I could not come up with artist names. So he um, got on his laptop and just started spouting off names like, "Oh yeah, that's yeah." And then um, next thing I know, there's like uh, thirty-seven, close to forty names. On yeah. The list. So I was like, "Okay, great. Now we got to rank them." <laughs> <laughs> so um, and you know, I forgot to tell you to see if you could include your favorite song from them. I don't know if you know that. I already did that. Okay, good. I already did good. That. Damn, we yeah. we really so, yeah I, yeah we, we really we, are Voltron because yeah. we there. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we we're seeing uh, we're good. Come on, Drew. What you about to say? Don't be ignorant. <laughs> I'm already, I'm we need to put this on a T-shirt. <laughs> we gotta put that on. Put t-shirt. on T-shirt. Don't be ignorant. don't be ignorant. <laughs> He's already turned to the side. Lid cross. Head is, is slightly down. So the top 10 list this week is top, our favorite, top 10 male R&B singers of all time. Now, I want to say this. It isn't based upon who has the best voice, the strongest voice, because that'll be a whole nother list, right? This is our favorite. Like when we we hear these people, oh, okay, I can listen to these people all Shut day. Shut it down. Not the strongest. We'll do something like that. You know, who we feel has the stronger voice, the best voice or whatever. We'll do, we'll do a countdown like that, you know, if you guys vote on it. But this is who 
is our favorite. Um, when we put these lists out there, make sure that you be on the lookout for them. I make sure that we have them posted on our Instagram page, on my personal page, and also on my Facebook page in the stories because that's where you can vote. And I'll probably what I may start also doing as well is putting it in a post so you can vote there, too, so that I add more votes. And, you know, maybe we would have gotten chicken nuggets instead of milkshakes if I had did it like that. So we're going to do the top 10 of our favorite male R&B. We're going to start off with our honorable mentions list. Um Drew is already bracing himself. Um, I'll go first this time with my honorable mentions. Okay. Honorable mentions. D'Angelo. Joe. Tevin Campbell. Gerald Levert, Jaheem. Curtis Mayfield. Donny Hathaway. I love Donny Hathaway. Miguel. He was almost in there too. I like Miguel. Maxwell. Al Green. Freddie Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> doubled over in pain Chris Brown Tyrese Genuine another one that almost made it Dave Hollister mm. Marvin Gaye and another one that almost made it Luther that is my <laughs> Drew is up holding his chest. John is looking around like, what's going on? I'm just going to sit. Remember what I said. You cut off Big and Little Luther? Big and Little. Remember what I said. Big Luther. This is ba- not on voice. This would be another list if it was based on strongest voice. You put out Big Luther and Big Luther. and Little Luther got cut. Drew may need to go. <laughs> He's holding his side. John is really out of it. This isn't based on voice. This is who my favorite male R and B artists are. It's a good thing Emma Michelle's not here. Today. Uh, yeah, I, I had to strategically change that around because she probably would have jumped the table on me. All right, John, your honorable mentions. All right. Print. I still haven't recovered from Kit Kat being an honorable mentions. Just to let you know, get over it. It's been over. <laughs> <laughs> Prince. Woo! Woo! Usher. Woo! Brian McKnight. Wow. D'Angelo. Wait, can we stop first? I don't think I caught my breath for it yet. Wait. <laughs> Prince and Usher's honorable mention. Wait. <sighs> okay, go ahead. Brian McKnight. Woo. If it's on anybody else's list, that's great. I mean, go ahead. I'm out of it. Disclaimer, this is my list. Mm-hmm. If you want to go ahead and blow a on your podcast and put out your list, go ahead. I respect it. You don't have to like it. It's okay. <sighs> D'Angelo. I think Maxwell. Anthony Hamilton. Oh, I forgot about Anthony. Bobby Brown. Oh. Teddy Pendergrass. Oh. Otis Redding. Case. Genuine. Joe. Montel Jordan. Chris Brown. Oh. Keith Sweat. Gerald Levert. Jeffrey Osborne. That was the thunder that you heard in the background. That thunder was talking to John about that Prince and Usher. Go ahead. <laughs> and Keith Sweat. Clarence Carter. <laughs> Keith Sweat is- Lenny Williams. Oh, man. Lenny. Al Green. Oh. Sam Cooke. Mm-hmm. Barry White. Oh, I forgot about baby. Charlie Wilson. Uncle Charlie. Freddie Jackson. Jaheen. Avant. John Legend. Oh, I forgot about Avant. You know, I love John Legend, like, first two albums after that. It just kind of went downhill. And you know what? I should have included Charlie Wilson, but let me tell you a funny thing real quick. My favorite songs with Charlie Wilson was when he was with the Gap Band, if that makes any sense. I don't know why. I like his older stuff. I like his newer stuff now, but... You gotta appreciate the older stuff. Yeah, when um, the way they crafted music was just so different. That yes, when they actually use live bands. Yes, sir. I have a deep affinity and appreciation for that. Yes, live band. Yes, so, yes, absolutely. I wish we can get back to that. <sighs> That's a story for another day. Yeah. All right. So let's start with number ten. John, you want to start off? Go ahead yeah. and take off. My number ten is uh, James Brown. 
Oh, all right. Hardest working man in mm-hmm. entertainment business. Yes, sir. Love James Brown. Love the movie. Woo! <laughs> uh, favorite song of his is, um, and I play it periodically, and it never gets old, Big Payback. Ah, that's a classic. Big Payback. All right. Number 10 for me. This is maybe not as known for a lot of people, but most of our audience probably knows who this is. Number 10 for me is Carl Thomas. I love Carl Thomas, Summer Rain, Emotional. Those are some of my favorite songs, but it's not my favorite song of Carl Thomas. My favorite song of Carl Thomas is on that album, Emotional. It is called Come To Me. That is a track on there. I love that song, but Carl Thomas... One of the casualties of uh, Sean P. Diddy Combs, but we'll get into that another day. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my number 10. Number nine. All right. Uh, number nine for me, uh, Mr. Cold as Ice himself. Ah. Mr. Rick James. Mm, I forgot to add Rick James to my honorable Mr. Rick James. To your honorable mentions. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mr. Rick James. Love Rick James. Mom yep. loves Rick James. Everybody loves Rick. Uh, favorite song, You and I. Oh, man. You and I. <laughs> <laughs> we get together. All right. Let me stop. <laughs> All right. My number nine, Usher. I love Usher. Um, I had every CD that he's put out and love all his songs. My favorite song of all time from Usher is You Don't Have to Call. It's okay, girl. Mm. So I'm going to be all right tonight. 8701. Let me tell you something. I, was, I went through a breakup when that song came out. That was 8701, right? Uh, no. Was it 8701? I wasn't conf- no, it was 8701 because it wasn't Confessions. And I remember when I went through that, me and Drew was getting ready to go out. And that song came out. I said, yes, sir. After tonight. <laughs> Don't let me go around me and your play with Hey, in the Metro, boy. <laughs> yes, sir. <In> the metro. <laughs> I murdered that CD in my CD. Hey, think he was in front of the mirror dancing like he was in the video and everything. <laughs> Doing this. <laughs> hey, I had some hooked from the radio straight to the sub. Yes, no sir, end. boy. But hey, I had that big bumping. It was bumping. Situation. That was a hatchback, right? Yes. Oh. It was Will everything. Rise. All-terrain vehicle. <laughs> yeah. It was used as a stunt vehicle. Yeah. Oh, my God. Had a, it was a plane at one point. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we got lift off. Oh. Yeah. With two of us in. Yeah. Yeah. That's another story. So that's number nine for me. Number eight. Number eight for me is Dave Hollister. Mm. He's on your honorable man. Mm-hmm. Whenever I hear Dave, I got to shut it down. Yes, sir. Chica- uh, Chicago, Chicago 85. 85. Yes, sir. Um, his album after that, absolute banger. Mm-hmm. Um, favorite song of his is uh, One Woman Man. Woo. Woo. I played that last night. Yeah. On repeat. Woo. That's a song for you, baby. Baby girl ain't know what was going on. <laughs> what is all this for you play? Can you play music? I said, <laughs> sure can. <laughs> She thought she was going to get Beyonce deja vu. Not mm, tonight. Mm-mm. We're going to go back to Chicago 85. Yes, sir. All right. Put the blanket over and went to sleep. <laughs> Number eight for me, and this may be a shock for a lot of people, but I will tell you his first CD, I played it from beginning to end, and it is still a classic to me. Probably my favorite R&B Album, what's well between that and 8701 and Confessions? I don't know, but I think this may be above it for me. But that first, oh, it was a classic to me, still is. I still play it to this day. Jamie Foxx, that unpredictable album is that's got to be the most talented individual in Hollywood, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jamie Foxx is my number eight. Love him as an actor, wow, but. Love him as a singer. My favorite song of his is Can I Take You Home. You haven't heard that? Woo. Ding, 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 ding. And Timbaland produced it, but it's a, it's a slow R&B. Oh, my God. We got to do a, a a top 10 producer list. Yeah. Oh, my God, man. Now you really going to get us killed. 
And you're going to be walking up out of here. Man, yeah, we, we definitely. I'm not going to participate. I'm just going to. <clears throat> I know you're going to be walking out of here after we give. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's number eight for me. Jamie Foxx, Can I Take You Home is the song. Number seven. That was strong. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I came with it. Come on with it. I got to sit and reflect on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, he would probably not made a lot of people's top ten. Yeah, it didn't make mine because I completely. Forgot you don't think him. about. I, it. I, I completely forgot about you. Jamie always Fox. think of him as the comedian or the actor. actor right? Yes, I didn't he, think of it. He's a and for him to what, what tribute concert did he do? Uh, Aretha Franklin, right? Where he was, he did a tribute. Um, did he do one with uh, Michael Jackson when he passed? Uh, no, he, did. he was playing. The, I, I remember the performance. I don't know what it was. I know what you're talking about. He was playing the piano. What happened is he hosted the BET Awards and what he did was he said I like this is before that song came out with Slow Jams with Twisted and, and, mm. and Kanye he played a melody of old songs because he took everybody back to when he said when music was music, well, music was and he played a melody of old songs and he played all those songs that's what you're thinking of yeah. he was on the piano on the stage on right the stage, yeah. yep that was it it was, was the part BET of his, uh, his, his, some of his um, concerts, his com- uh, his comedy yes. concerts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, wow, I forgot about Jamie. Mm-hmm. I came with it, baby. Shit, I'm... <laughs> What's the word of the day, John? Because that's what you are right now, is it? Flabbergasted. Yes. But that's not the word of the day. Okay. I, I don't think I'm going to have one today. But um, So, I, and I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. When you talk about, you know, I'm playing the piano. Mm-hmm. Um, I want everybody to go look up uh, Hazel Scott. Mm. Hazel Scott. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be featuring her down the line. But Hazel Scott. Okay. Did you know Jamie Foxx was uh, fluent in sign language as well? I didn't know that. Yeah. No. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> okay. Let me get back on task here. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, that's a multifaceted brother. Wow. Okay. All right, number seven. Wow. Music Soul Child. Oh yeah. This brother here wore out, and I'm and I'm just gonna say this. I'm not gonna impede on you know on yours, but that's my number seven as well. Okay. But this brother here to my right. He wore out music. That's what? the first time I hey. ever heard him listen to R and B in my life. So, so music, you, you know them CDs you make when you try to cut. You know, what I'm saying those. those yeah. Yes. To, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. That was that was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I made, <laughs> hey, in high school, when you try to put that. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, music yeah. soul child. I saw him live. Who? Yeah, I remember you told us. Mm. Yes. So many hits, mm-hmm. so many hits. But. I feel like he's underrated. Do I, am I wrong in that? Yeah, no, you're not. You're, okay, you're, you're, I feel like he's highly underrated. He's very underrated. Cause that I just want to sing the first album. What from beginning to end? What, bruh? Okay, all right. I'm shut sorry. it down. Once again, this is one of those you just you hear one of his songs. Mm-hmm. You got to shut it down. Boom, 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 so, boom, 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 boom. that's not even my favorite song, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so many, but and that's okay. the first song mm-hmm. off of that album. So, yes, um, favorite song of his is "Love." Ah, uh, yeah, beautiful song. Played that last night. Beautiful song. As baby girl wanted to listen to uh, more Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> You want to hear music? Let me give you some music. Oh my god! Nothing against Beyonce, right? Poor thing, but she just wanted to get hype a little bit. Hey, I wanted to be cultured too, though. Yeah, hey, so, he's a soul child to do it. Number seven. All right, that's what we, that was your number seven. That, you know what? My day is good because you you included one that would have been on my my top yeah. top five. Yeah. I would have said that was number one. Shoot, she how you played the music? <laughs> yeah, my my favorite song for music is um is from his first album. It's called One Four Three. I love that song. Man, how did I forget about One Four Three? I love love that song for music, but that's my number seven. Uh, Drew, what's your favorite song for music? A damn good song. Love, actually. Oh, okay, all right. I love music, man. Music is. I don't think you can go that wrong. Note, though. That note, Mm-mm. note, that note. Yes, sir. Note. Yes, sir. That note. Wow. Um, yeah. 
That's all I got to say. Now I'm waiting for him to do a versus. I would have loved to have seen him go against D'Angelo or something like that. That would have been good. But he, yeah. Just for. I don't know who could really. Well, there's some people that can match up, but damn. I don't think. You think D'Angelo can match up well with um, music? Hit for hit, no, because he doesn't. The Angel has to come out with a lot of songs. Music has more hits. Yeah, because the Angel only made like three albums, I think. But it's been a while since Man. he came out with a, with a. About 2018, I think, 17, something like that. He came out with one. Um, but yeah, yeah, music is woo. Okay, we there. Okay, <laughs> all right. Number six. Number six, Babyface. Ah man, I forgot about Babyface. You forgot about Babyface. Damn. Face. You know, <clears throat> take nothing away from him. I love him as a singer. So, do you consider him more of a singer or more of a producer? More of a producer songwriter. Oh, That's where my that, thought okay. goes with well, Babyface. The first time I think of Babyface, like, oh, he wrote all the boys to men hits, and he wrote for this person and that. But then he does have some great songs. I do like Babyface. Babyface. Um, didn't appreciate him. Uh, listening to him in the back seat of my mom's uh, Honda Accord mm. on the way to baseball practice or to a baseball game, but um, as I got older, mm-hmm. um, he was on a couple of them. Uh, understood. Mm-hmm. A whip appeal, baby, and that is actually my favorite song. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much mm-hmm. uh, for that smooth segue into that one. So. Mm. Babyface is my number six. All right. Woo. My number six is Bobby Brown. I grew up a very big... Huh? My prerogative? No. Really? My favorite song is Rock Rock With You. That's his slow song. Bobby Brown. That was one of my favorite singers growing up. Baby, just touch me anywhere. Woo! So yeah, Rock Witch is my favorite song. I got the entire impact of that entire song. Bob, that 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 impact of that entire album. Woo. Like Bobby Brown owned the late '80s there for a very. He without, was the without, king of R and B for yeah. I mean, he went from opening for New Edition to New Edition opening for him. <laughs> I mean. He is the group. I mean, people pay to see Bobby Brown, but Bobby Brown is uh, my number six. I just, I have a lot of songs that I like of him. There's a song that he did with um, Damian Marley called Beautiful. That's one of my Mm -hmm. favorite songs of all time. Favorite. Big up yourself. (laughs) Yeah, I I, I love it. So um, Bobby Brown's my number six. Number five. Number five. And I had to separate the. Okay, so we're on the same. We're we're, we're on the same for number five. Then go ahead and give I the disclaimer. To, I had to separate the. And I heard you say that I knew right then who your number five. Yeah, because yeah. we had a brief discussion about it. Yes, um, whether or not he should be on the list. Got to separate, separate the artist. Me. Yes, from the person. And a lot of you can mm. do that as well. And uh, I'm not looking at it from John's not looking at it from a oh. I can't I, put I this man. I, I have to. I know to. where you're going with this. Yeah. Right. But that brings me to uh, Dave Chappelle. Uh, go ahead and say your name thing first. If I'm okay. thinking of, if I'm thinking the right person. It's the right person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Robert. It's Robert. Okay. So how old is 15? Really? That's a whole nother episode. I'm when you're, when you're, th- when you're 30 something. No, 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 no. Watch the Dave Chappelle. Which one? Well, he talks about 15, how Mm -hmm. 15 really. You know, so here's the thing, right? As a man, he should have known better. As a man, if you were his age, would you have? No, me personally, no. But remember how many girls that were at our school that were dating, getting picked up by old men? Correct. I remember seeing that at a ninth grade center. Yes. Yeah. Um, And I even back then, I thought that was just like, damn. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's weird now. Yeah. So I got to watch that Dave Chappelle yeah. thing. I, but I, I I think it's I think so it's twofold for me with the whole Robert Kelly. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole too yeah. much, That's but it's twofold for me with Robert Kelly. Right. Robert Kelly is nasty, disgusting for what he did. But on the flip side of that, 
He was a what the hell is up with their parents? Why would you let your 14, 15, 16 year old go with this man that you know has interest in your child other than music exploits? And you let them go stay with him. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Correct. And then want to cry about it like, oh, my child won't come home. What did you do? You put them, you let them go to an influential man. man. Yeah, I'm not going to go down there. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go back. (laughs) That's for another episode. Yeah. Um, But what? Get your song. But I got a daughter, so. Yeah. Uh, Listen, I I bet you, you know what? I'll I'll bet my bottom dollar, right? You won't let your daughter walk to the mailbox down the street unattended right now. No. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Because even when we, um, a, a, a few weeks ago, when we were on vacation, and my wife went to go for a walk mm-hmm. around the, and once again, it's a safe environment. I consider it a safe environment. Mm-hmm. But even so, she said, hey, take baby girl down to the pool. She wants to get to the pool. Okay, cool. I can't relax. Even, even though we were out there for an hour, I couldn't relax. Yeah. I was always on edge. Yeah. And my eyes were fixated on her position mm. at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Would it be different if it was a boy? Maybe. No, it's not. It's I have two boys. Okay. And you know what? And boy, my boys are 10 and 7, right? Mm-hmm. And they're to a point where they want to try to do things on their own. Mm-hmm. We're in a public restaurant. They want to go to the bathroom on their own. No. Wrong. Oh, absolutely. Wrong. I didn't stop. Shit, I didn't yeah. stop going to the bathroom with Isaac until he was about 12 or 13. About 13, maybe. I want to say thirteen. Yeah. So if it was me and her, he he, I didn't let him go to the bathroom by himself. He knew not to go to the bathroom by himself, and and I can attest to you because hell, when we were in the pool, when we went to uh, that Disney um, water park, yeah. Even then, Andrew was paranoid, and I was like, "Don't worry, man. I'm I got him. I got him right here." Andrew paranoid, so mm. it, it it's it's for the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was on edge the end. I can I can the entire time, and you have to be. You know what I mean? You have to be careful um, in a sense with what you do with kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, because kids don't know. And there's so many people that know that kids don't know and they take advantage of that. And again, not saying that 15 years old, you don't know. But if I'm 15 years old and you put 30 year old Holly Berry in front of me. Yeah, I'm going with her. I'm a good actor. Mom and dad, I ain't coming back home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but you know the, the premise of it of, of it is though, you know whether or not you want to be peed on at 15 years old. Um, you that know whole, you know whole, you know you you know, but you don't you, you your mind is different when it's Robert Kelly. I'm sorry, not even I'm not going to use Robert Kelly. I'm going to say your mind is different when it's a celebrity. At that age, nah, well, you know, I, we're not influenced by celebrities at our age right now, but go back 20 years, um, 20, 23 years. How, how did you feel about if you met a celebrity? When you used to meet celebrities in the airport, you used to tell me all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're you relaying that message to me was of excitement. If you meet one now, it's just like, yeah, I saw it. it shit, you probably won't even tell me because it's nothing. So imagine that person taking you in, telling you you have this this gift and all of this stuff, and it's going to make you a big star. You stick with me. Hey, I've look at my plaques. Look at this big ass mansion you're living in. That you're going to have, have, yeah. Have, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So you're easily influenced at a younger age than you would be as an adult. And I, I'll give you that when like, you that. when you when you know how to. Do it. Remember, because this is that's an art. That's an art form. Sick as it is, it's an art form. It's an art form. Yeah. You you got to work on that craft to be able to be a predator and and to be able to speak that game to where you can influence that younger person to. Oh, so yeah, we went down a rabbit hole. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. <laughs> what were you going to say? Like, say like I said, one thing I want to get out. I'm not making any excuses for him. Mm-hmm. Right, as an individual, as a man that. Yeah. A sickening individual, right? Music is separate from that individual. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, um, 
Actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna make excuses for him. As a as a oh, as a man, he should have known better. Yeah. And I'll give it at that. I'll leave it at that. Uh, absolutely. I I um tell me if that wouldn't pair good with a good cigar. I like um at fifteen years old, would I have let Holly Berry pee on me? I don't know. I wouldn't let nobody pee on me. I listen, in general, you're not 15, pissing on me. But at 15 years old, if I'm in there nah, I having a, and I done sexually, Holly Berry done stripped naked in front of me. I'm just using oh, her as absolutely, an example. Absolutely. Or Pam for Martin. I was really in love with Pam for Martin. Pam for Pam Martin had stripped naked in front of me. I didn't realize how me. thick. Well, I'm sorry. I knew how thick she was. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Hopefully, at 15, hopefully, hopefully she's not listening to this one. At 15 years old and she stripped down in front of me and... I'm under her trying to learn my craft because I want to become an actor. And she, t- ma'am, I'm I'm 15 year old. Keith is like, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying now? Man, there was some teachers back in the day that. Uh, yeah, there was there was one at Liberty. Li- yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we, uh, we, we think of the same mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. Very Holly Berry ish. Yeah. Hmm. So. You know, had that short hair. That yeah, she hair. did. She did. She did. Anyway, so I'm, let's, I, let's I'm just, let's I'm just using that as an example. Good but. times, great stuff. Yes, but back to the the story. Go ahead, John. What was your your favorite song from Robert before he screwed everything up? Fiesta. Okay. My favorite song from Robert was uh, Forever. That was off the Chocolate Factory album, and Banging the Headboard. I had to add a second one in there. Banging the Headboard, I like, but yeah. Robert is, yeah, uh, yeah, and it's funny. I everybody on my list, on my top ten list, I looked through my Spotify, and I've liked so many songs of them. That's how I knew these people were my favorite. Like my number one pick, I like sixty six songs. You know, as opposed to the number two, I've liked twenty six songs. Right, mm. and when I when I did the list, and when I talked to you last night, and we kind of discuss we didn't discuss our list but you brought his name up mm-hmm. i already knew because i was actually on him at that point oh you were ranking him. yeah i had already had him rank right and i looked on my spotify and there was none like <laughs> for him and i was like yeah. i didn't like but a song pops up i do catch myself <laughs> singing the song because it was good i mean but again i've separated you the man the yeah absolutely man. Um and and hey, people do it all the time. Look at Woody Allen. So, um, mm. let's go to number four. I got to sit and reflect on that. One. <laughs> Woody Allen is one. Oh, We're not gonna go down that rabbit hole today. We went down one that yeah. kind of expected it when once that name came up. But. What's your number four, John? <laughs> um. <laughs> My number four is uh, Bill Withers. Ah, just a tear. Yes. Is that is that your song? That no, 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 no. Um, he that that would be one of the songs. But my my favorite song of Bill Withers is "Lovely Day." Oh yeah, yeah. Um, especially if I'm down. Mm -hmm. Um. I can always pull that song up or not even necessarily pull the song, just sing the lyrics and um, sort of pull myself out of it. Um, so I feel warm and fuzzy inside afterwards. It does make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah. That Plus song. that voice is just, uh, he just has such a unique voice. Mm-hmm. And then once again, I just have a, a deep appreciation for how music was made and crafted Back in the day, mm-hmm. um, actually in the studio with a, a live band, uh, and he owned all his stuff. He owned all he owned his publishing, wow. everything he owned. You know, and they they always said those artists were difficult because he wouldn't allow the the labels to own his music. But so you mean to tell me? Because I remember there was a commercial. It was a for a video game. I think it was called Dante's um, something, mm-hmm. and. They were playing um, Ain't No Sunshine on that 30-second bit. Bill got all of that. that. 
all you of got that. all of it. Yes, sir. Wow. Anytime you heard Lovely Day, just the two of us, which you heard in plenty of commercials or Movies. samples, everything. Yeah. He owned all of that. Roll Bounce had yeah. a few of those hits. Yeah. He, he owned all of that. He got paid on all that. Um, once he reached a certain age, he actually stopped performing. He wouldn't sing no more because he said he didn't feel like his voice was up to par. And one of, um, you know, Quest Love from The Roots, mm -hmm. he kept trying to get him to do an album because he was able to get Al Green to do an album. But he wouldn't do it. And unfortunately, I think he passed, yeah, he just, he passed last it. year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you haven't yet, go on YouTube and put in Bill Withers, just the two of us live performance. He did at the Grammys. Ooh. Oh, man. It was just him and two guys. And one guy was using, I don't know what instrument that was. He was just doing the shake. And the other guy was playing the guitar. And it was... It was acoustic, right? Yeah. And they were so... You never seen somebody when they, when Bill with the Star singing both the guys because they actually wrote the song I can't remember their names right now, but this big grin just popped up on their face just showing how much they enjoyed hearing him sing it and performing up there with him. It was like wow, this is what it's about. Yeah, you know what I mean. So good choice, man. I, I forgot to put him down. Period. And I really do like Bill Withers. Ain't no sunshine mm -hmm. when she comes. Um, number four for me. Drew, don't jump out of your seat. Don't Michael care. Jackson. He's number four. Um, I love Michael Jackson. I, got he, heartburn, man. I know. I love Michael Jackson. He just was not better than the top three for me that I enjoy. And I love Michael Jackson. Um, but he just wasn't in the top three, so uh, I, can I, see you. I got him at number four. You're my going to take an ignorant fucking turn on this right now. That's my, for, <laughs> for that. But you, you know what I'm talking about. My name, my favorite song. Is there, there's names that he didn't say. My favorite song from Michael Jackson is actually two. I couldn't pick between the two. Mm. Um, Butterflies and Lady in My Life. Uh, those are my two favorite Michael Jackson songs wow. of all time. So good choices. Thank you. Uh, so Michael Jackson is my number four. You now it may upset this, some people. This name better be in the top. Two. I'm just saying, if this name ain't here, number this three, will be my last day on the for you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put out application. Man. Uh, you put have yourself to. on waivers. Yeah. I hope. I hope I, I did right, by I'm gonna put my FMLA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be on leave. I'll come back season two. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, I'm not fooling with you, oh, bro. Man. I'm not fooling with you, man. Oh, if I don't hear this name. <sighs> oh, sugar. I'm not dealing with you. <laughs> Number number three for you, Joe. Uh, number three. Uh, I think he was on well, your... One better be Dylon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it better uh, be. All right. He spits hot fire. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how he, how he <laughs> navigates through the day. Like... I'm sure people just jump in his face when they see him. Ooh. It's like dialogue, the real dialogue, <laughs> like the real dialogue. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me so much because he spits hot fire. Rapunzel, <laughs> 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 a lot of mercy. Uh, hey, you better be number one. Dog. I always wanted to make music with Mike Left man. <laughs> You're too close, man. <laughs> oh. Oh, that episode. Top oh, five shit. episode there, too. Oh, the Chappelle the show. Shut down the studio. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need breast milk. <laughs> I'm a Cambodian immigrant. <laughs> and when he said that, he said... <laughs> The, the incredulous <laughs> look on his face is dialogue oh, when he said that. That's a nice word. Thank you. That's the word of the word. What was the word I missed? Incredulous, incredulous look that he had on his face is dialogue when he said about the Cambodian. Incredulous? Like, yeah. He's like. 
<laughs> you know it was real when he came in on a on a piggyback. Ride. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Okay, we're on number three, right? <laughs> yes, number three. Oh man, thank you. Oh, Luther. Oh, Luther's number three for me. All right. Um, All right. Uh, favorite song is uh, Superstar. Don't you mm. remember you told me? All right. Once again, that's one of those um, backseat bangers that I didn't really appreciate as a six-year-old child. Mm. Headed to Azalea Park, uh, Little League. Mm. But um, as I got older, yeah, I was uh, fully invested in Luther. Yeah, I, I got I fully invested as I got older with him, too. Yeah. Um, Gave to my father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I like your number three. That was number three, right? Yeah. Number three. Okay. Number three for me. Teddy P. Teddy Pendergrass. He is uh, one of my favorite Damn, artists of all time. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> Where you going, Drew? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm that that's one of my favorite. I'm not, I'm not, Teddy P. is. Uh, one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, <laughs> I couldn't put, I couldn't just narrow it down to one favorite song. I've got like four or five here and I'm just going to give it to you is get up, get down, get funky, get loose. You're my latest, greatest inspiration. Come go with me. Love TKO and whole town's laughing at me. I think that was that by himself or was that with Harold Melvin and Blue Notes? I think it was by himself. Mm-hmm. Uh so yeah. That um that's my number three. Okay. Number two. We getting down to it. Number two. What you got for number two, John? Number two. Just for visual sake, Drew is right now in the corner. He's away from the microphone. I well, yeah, he's absolutely. praying that we're not ignorant. So yeah, but um, make room, make it smaller, whatever you need to do. I think he'll appreciate this one. Okay, uh, my number two is Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie, we have the same number two. Okay, Stevie Wonder, same number two. <sighs> you can take just about any of his albums mm-hmm. and yes, let sir. it ride. Yes, sir. Um. My favorite songs, I really could not narrow it down to one. Mm-hmm. Um, my my picks would be As, mm-hmm. so Loving You Always, mm-hmm. um, Living for the City, mm. Good song. Ribbon in the Sky. Yes. Uh, what am I missing? Um We'll just leave it at that because I can. My mother shared. Oh, can you hear me? My uh, but, um, so my immigrant mother shared with me as an immigrant mm-hmm. in Jamaica that one of the first songs I ever sang was I Just Called. Oh, wow. Wow. So they reached, his presence reached. All the way to Jamaica. Kingston, Jamaica. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. I I will say my, my, uh. I love Stevie Wonder. I could listen to him all day. I actually do listen to him all day. Um, when I was put him on the list last night, I actually just played the songs that I like from him. Just all of the songs um, in in my in this room here. Um, my songs, of course, I couldn't limit it to one. If you really love me, don't you worry about a thing. Knocks me off my feet. Wow. Never dreamed. And you are the sunshine of my life. Mm. You are the sunshine of my... Okay. That's number two (laughs) for us. And now, let's get to number one. Now, we've gone through this list. This has been a great list. I really enjoyed this, fellas. This this has been great putting it together. He's really tense. He's standing there, arms folded. He just doesn't know. So, number one... Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Let me try it. I think you'll like that one. Okay. Yeah. I really like that that uh 
red meats, spice meats. Spice meats. Uh, nice rice. aged steak, maybe. What about cheeses? Cheeses as well. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, you ain't like that? Ugh. Oh. Oh, my God. Yeah. Maybe because I still got the taste of the other one in my mouth. Oh, it's not too bad. I'm sorry. It isn't that bad. Is this the one with the is this the one with the caskets? Yes, it is. You ain't got to say barrels. We'll use barrels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, strong as shit. Okay. It's not that strong. <laughs> Damn. Pup up you. All right. <laughs> number one. I think I'm I got glad a somebody got that. I know who your number one is. Yeah. Because I didn't hear him in your honorable mentions. And he was my number four. Uh, Go ahead. My number one is Michael Jackson. All right. MJ. Mm -hmm. And you actually reference my favorite song. Lady in My Life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That song is. What is that? that, Was that on Thriller? I don't know if that was on. I think it was on Thriller. Yeah, it wasn't on Off the Wall, I don't think. But uh, Lady in My Life. Of course, rock with you. Yeah, it was Thriller. <clears throat> Annie, are you okay? Annie, are you okay? You okay, Annie? Butterflies. Oh, man. Wow. Butterflies. Inside. He, he murdered that song. Oh, my God. I love that song. He murdered it. Love it. I hate that he passed away so soon after that album was released because he didn't really get a chance to perform that song. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine him performing that song live and people would have passed out. Oh yeah. You know there's never been a I don't think we will ever see an artist in our lifetime the magnitude of Michael Jackson where people were falling out at stadiums, getting carried out, passing out if the man just pointed at him or something. I don't know if we'll ever see that again. Do you think? No, cuz I find it funny cuz um Matter of fact, I was watching, and you probably saw this interview with uh, Chris Jericho, Mm -hmm. with Chris Jericho on um, the Broken Skull sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was talking about when he finally came to WWE Mm -hmm. as um, Jericho, Mm -hmm. and he talked about his introduction to the WWE universe. Yeah, and where he got the the stand like that from the Michael stand Jackson. like that from Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. And he said he he was was he at a concert or I think he was watching a concert. He was watching a concert TV. where Michael Jackson came out, didn't address the crowd, mm-hmm. but he had his back to the crowd mm-hmm. for a whole five to ten minutes. Yeah, people were crying, passing out, screaming, you name it, they were doing it. And then everybody does the the moonwalk, the heel kick. Yeah. He was just such a revolutionary, um, introducing us to choreography. Yes. Um, Learn different moves from different individuals and mm-hmm. made it his own. Mm-hmm. Um, hell of an artist. Mm-hmm. Hell of a performer. Um. In my view, he died too young. He did, but it seems like most of the the greats, the greats die young. That had been something to see an old Michael Jackson. Could you imagine that I in twenty twenty one? I don't know. Would his performances still be as uh, palpable? And well, that was supposed to be the last concert he was going to do. I don't know if he would have held on to that, but and I appreciate the fact that he was a shrewd businessman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Purchasing, uh, he purchased the M&M's. He purchased M and M's. Yeah, uh, his, <laughs> yeah. His his whole catalog, mm-hmm. the Beatles catalog. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just be coming up in conversation mm-hmm. when he was talking to Paul. Yep. Paul's like, yeah, think about buying it. How much would you get for it? <laughs> I like how you did this for me. <laughs> just how much would you do? <laughs> You know who, who who did his voice uh, when he was talking about that whole? It wasn't even a bit, but because it was real life, it was Eddie Griffin. Yeah, Eddie Griffin was talking about that. Talk, yeah, talk, Eddie what, Griffin would do like him pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. talking about um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, outside of that, and 
all of his uh, exploits and um, misadventures th- over the years. Mm-hmm. The guy was a, a genius um, artist. Yeah, and uh, once again, I wish he was still here. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, you know, I asked my my parents a question. I said, "Did you ever think Michael Jackson? Because he was big when you guys were kids, right? With the Jackson Five. Did you ever think he would have turned out the way he turned down? He was like, "No," because he was, you know, a black looking kid, and then he did all that stuff, and he looked nothing like what he looked as a kid. So it was like, "Did you ever?" imagine him turning out like that he was like no we never thought you know we didn't think about it but you know mm-hmm. just didn't think you know half the things that happened we didn't think would happen we didn't think Marvin Gaye would get killed by his dad we didn't think Teddy Pendergrass would get you know paralyzed in a car accident and you know a whole bunch of things so I said that makes sense wow um, I, I just kind of attribute to if we had seen that happen to Usher right like if he had transformed himself like that like on a Sammy Sosa level, cool. that just would have Sammy Sosa. Sosa. You haven't seen Sammy Sosa lately, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So imagine if Usher, because that's that's our. It isn't our generation's Michael because no one's Michael, but he was up getting up to that level, and just we watched him come out as a kid. And but what drove him to change his appearance? Self hate, man. Sometimes that a you know. They're doing it now. They're bleaching themselves now. Because honestly, when I was a young kid, mm-hmm. just completely young, I thought he was a woman. Really? Yeah, I really thought he was a woman. Wow. wow. Well, I mean, it could be, he, yeah. He had some of those features, but. The hair and all that stuff. I listened to him singing, and sometimes when he yeah. was really getting into um, some of the ballads, mm-hmm. I was like, nah, that's a dude. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just self-hate. It's a, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big problem. Um, I, I see it's a big problem with your home country, uh, your home place. Yeah, it's it's Make unfortunately it's hit there. But you know, it's it's the American influence on Caribbean nations, man. So yeah, it's not the American or European? Hmm. Mm. The American or European, or it doesn't matter. It doesn't really Probably matter. Doesn't matter. One hand washes the other when it right. comes to yeah. stuff. So it's sad. When when it's drilled down that the definition of beauty is the European version of beauty mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah so yeah wow all right thank you for your number one john my number one if you know anything about me you know that this guy is my favorite artist of all time he i used to emulate him as a little kid um i had a cookie monster chair i would jump off of it playing my guitar, doing splits like him. Um, He was my favorite of all time from a kid to an adult. Uh, When he passed away, um, that I I think I I probably put Kobe passing away was a bigger shock than him, but. Oh, so you've always liked. Yeah. You've always liked the second best. So, you you know why he was number one? Because he didn't allow himself to be a slave to the labels. Didn't he own all his stuff? Too? Yes, everything. Cool. And he wouldn't work with you if you, you didn't. didn't stuff, correct. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the musician or? The musician. Okay, all right. So my number one, um, loved his movies. Um, Purple Rain and I, I wish he had did more he did only two um just my favorite my favorite favorite artist of all time i'm not even mad at that um I, i'm not prince i'm mad that that made your honorable mentions list prince is yeah my favorite song of all i had a few i'm gonna put a few adore um a thousand x's and o's bet you by golly wow scandalous do me baby let's work my absolute all-time favorite song of Prince that just puts me in another world whenever I hear one, two, one, two, three, go. Raspberry Beret. Boy, let me tell you something. When that melody comes in at that that song, I actually played it last night, right? I try not to play it when I'm driving because I kind of space out when, I, when it plays. So I was just sitting here and I was done doing what I was doing and that song came on. And 
I sat here for probably the first half of the song in a trance because he's singing, but also talking to you and rapping in the beginning of the song somewhat. You know what I mean? And Prince just, you know, that the guitar performance at the the Hall of Fame where he he was up there performing with Eric Clapton on him and he just made them look like amateurs and then threw the guitar up in the sky and disappeared. <laughs> the guitar disappeared. He disappeared. That's one thing uh, people don't realize how great he was as a guitarist. Oh my God. Everybody always puts Eric Clapton up there as far as like no. the best guitar. No, no. Not even close. No. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm you, saying what? You listen to Prince make love did you? I, I think he comes close to only Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix Jimmy is Hendrix number is one. Now put Prince is two. Did you um, remember his performance? I think this is like the greatest performance I've seen at Super Bowl. Oh my God! Yes, and he uh, used Famu, Famu um, band with him, and that was the best. Could you? And it was raining the entire. Yes. Time. The irony, right? That was Purple stage. rain. That was, that was stage. He came into agreement with God. God he, yes. Went, he, he, he emailed God and said, hey. Now, he did have his hair wrap. He did. The whole time. But he said, God, I need it to rain for dramatical purposes. I have Please. no idea. Make this happen. God said, I oblige. <laughs> I have no idea how he created friction on a wet stage. Yeah. And did not slip because yeah. I thought he was going to slip at some particular he point. He defies physics. He does. With the heels and oh God, I he's always wore the heels. Yeah, yeah. that well, that kind of led to somewhat of his downfall because with him doing the jumps and the splits with the heels, um, he had hip injury, uh, issues and he was medicating and that that just I was like, what Prince? What? I mean, I kind of felt like you know when you get a sense of doom. He had they said he had that overdose on the plane. At one time, like maybe a month before he died, mm-hmm. and I said, like, "Oh man, this don't sound good." And sure enough, it just like that sense of doom with him. I felt, um, and it's like I don't know. I could not imagine him or Michael Jackson growing old. I don't know why. It was just it was always something I thought about too. Like, what are these guys going to look like and be like when they're old? I just can't imagine it. And unfortunately, they both died in their early fifties, right? Yeah. Yeah. They'll never be old. They'll never be old. So, um, was yeah, Prince. Was he, was he six? No, he wasn't 60. He wasn't pushing 60? No. Um, Prince just turned, his birthday was the other day. And I think he just, he would have been 63. And he died in 2000 and what, 17, 16? Something like that. All right. Yeah, seventeen. He he wasn't. Um, so he's in his mid to late fifties. Yeah. Okay. He wasn't. Um, Just the transition alone from the high note to the higher higher note. Yeah, Purple the brain. deepest highest. And, and who? He was born in fifty eight and born in. He was born in fifty eight and died in two thousand sixteen. So he was fifty. Fifty eight. Eight. Yeah. And then who can forget the infamous pancakes? Pancakes. Story has been confirmed. <laughs> Story has, has been confirmed. confirmed. On Jimmy Fallon by, uh, well, Prince. Eddie Murphy. Did you see the video of Prince? Out? They had a video of Prince balling. Oh, my God. You got to see it. In the heels, too. It, yeah. The whole shirts versus the blouses thing. Yeah. Real. So nobody knew it was a, it's real. based on a true story. Eddie confirmed. <laughs> um, they all got smoked. Yeah, that was one of the and him dunking Dave Chappelle dunking as him, and then looking and looking back down, noticing <laughs> that he's in there, and then floating back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, Prince is my number one of all time. That'll never change. Uh, he's just my favorite. So, would you like to play a game of basketball? <laughs> And I'm sure Charlie Murphy <laughs> laughed at him like that too. You know, Jay, <laughs> shoot it, shoot it. Paul Mooney just passed not too long ago. Too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, R.P. to Why Paul Mooney. Why don't the waters of Lake Minnetonka? <laughs> <laughs> so that was our top ten. I, you know, we had fun doing that. that wait, was, that wait, was wait. He, oh, he did. Yeah, he did his number one. So, um, well, I'm, I'm, our, our number ones were rivals. So I didn't hear Ray. 
Ray Charles. I didn't. It wasn't my favorite artist. I like. I didn't hear Johnny Gill. Hear, eh, uh, Johnny had one song, two songs that I really liked. Everybody was singing "My My My" for. Lee yeah, Lee. I, I love "My My My." I got in trouble with that song. I didn't hear Keith Sweat. He wasn't even in your honorable mention. I was never really a big Keith Sweat fan. His voice was very annoying to me. I want to hear him. I didn't hear Barris Hammond. I didn't hear. Is Barris Hammond? Mm. Are I they are they considered R and B though? The Jamaicans, so. but they're not considered R and B. The Jamaican. We can. I do love Wayne Wonder. Wow. Um, thank you, Drew. I appreciate you trying to yeah make our list feel. I like didn't hear shit. that long. I'm disappointed. Anyways, uh, that was our top ten list. So I didn't hear, I didn't hear uh, sex with chocolate. Let's right? talk over Drew. <laughs> Real quick, have you guys heard about? Naomi uh, Asuka. Is that how you say Osaka. it? Osaka. 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 I'm sorry. Osaka. Did you hear about everything that's been going on with her? Um, she announced that she wasn't going to attend the French Open uh, press conference due to mental health. She wanted to, you know, keep her mental health and she was going to withdraw. And so the French Open. Well, I think uh, she withdraw because the French Open had such a. No, I mean, from doing the press. I haven't got that point. Yeah, oh, I know what okay. you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. But she would she withdraw from doing the after match press conference. And so. They took it upon themselves to say, okay, you're not going to talk to the media. We're going to issue you a fine. And so it earned her a $15,000 fine from the French Open and a threat by all four Grand Slam tournaments to serve her more penalties, including suspension, if she did not talk to the media. Mm. And because of that, as Drew said earlier, she withdrew. What are your thoughts on that? She's 23 years old, Mm -hmm. four-time Grand Slam winner. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, let me, let me read her statement before we get to her, to your thoughts on that. Her statement, when she withdrew, she stated, Hey everyone, this isn't a situation I ever imagined or intended when I posted a few days ago. I think now the best thing for the tournament, the other players and my well being, is that I withdraw so that everyone can get back to focusing on the tennis going on in Paris. I never want it to be a distraction and I accept that my timing was not ideal and my message could have been clearer. More importantly, I would never trivialize mental health or use the term lightly. The truth is that I have suffered long bouts of depression since the U.S. Open in 2018 and I've had a really hard time coping with that. Anyone that knows me knows I'm introverted and anyone that has seen me at the tournaments will notice that I'm often wearing headphones as that helps dull my social anxiety. Though the tennis press has always been kind to me and I want to apologize, especially to all the cool journalists who I may have hurt. I am not a natural public speaker and get huge waves of anxiety before I speak to the world's media. I get really nervous and find it stressful to always try to engage and give you the best answers I can. So here in Paris, I was already feeling vulnerable and anxious. So I thought it was better to exercise self care and skip the press conferences. I announced it preemptively because I do feel like the rules are quite outdated in parts. And I wanted to highlight that I wrote privately to the tournament, apologizing and saying that I would be more than happy to speak with them after the tournament as the slams are intense. I'm going to take some time away from the court now, but when the time is right, I really want to work with the tour to discuss ways we can make things better for the players, press, and fans. Anyways, hope you all are doing well and staying safe. Love you guys. I'll see you when I see you. Thoughts? That was eloquently said or statement. One thing, one problem I have with these these type of tournaments and all this kind of stuff is that that they think that these people travel from all corners of the world to, for the tournament itself. They come to see the players. The players are the tournament. Without the players, there would be no tournament on the stage, right? Mm-hmm. So, I I never understood why you would force a player to speak. I understand it from a business aspect, but from the player's aspect, I, I, I see their part 
more so than anything, right? Mm -hmm. There are individuals that are truly disturbed when it comes to sitting in front of an audience and having to, because they ask the most dumbest questions. Right? Oh my God. So in, in the third set, you guys went back and forth and this is that, and this is that what happened there. Exactly what you just said. Right. So no, they, I think the French, the French open dropped the ball on it. Right. They exposed themselves. They showed exactly what their, you know, they, yeah. You know, their hand mm -hmm. exactly what their you know their main concern is and with any business you know it's their bottom line mm -hmm. right but they had a, a tremendous opportunity to protect their bottom line and bring in a larger base and mm -hmm. i think they dropped the ball because they had this old colonization uh mentality mm -hmm. right they wanted the, the black athlete to entertain mm -hmm. and not to have a thought for themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. They wanted her to shut up and play. Mm. Mm. I've heard that before. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to hear it again mm. because as long as that old colonial mentality is out there, mm -hmm. right. And as long as we, sh we, we, you know, you have certain individuals that are willing to shuck and jive and play into that. Mm -hmm. but we're gonna have to deal with this on, on on different platforms so good for her man you know it's I, I i personally can understand i can relate to that yeah uh and I, i'll leave it at that yeah john good for her for responding to the old regime trying to flex on Naomi Osaka and trying to impose a, uh, a task that I don't necessarily feel is needed. Because if I watch a tennis event, I'm there to watch the tennis event and not to watch an athlete's interaction with the media. This is not 1980s or 1990s or even the early 2000s when for your brand, you probably needed the media to put your name out there, good or bad or indifferent. Mm -hmm. Naomi Osaka, especially she, since she essentially pulled the crown from Serena back in 2018 when she won the U.S. Open. She is the, uh, the bar. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need to communicate to the media or she shouldn't be mandated to communicate to the media when she is your top star. And I'd probably say, and in, in, in arguably in all the tennis, mm -hmm. she's that damn good. Right in over 400 million. So you trying to flex and tell her, well, you need to, after your matches, you're physically and mentally exhausted, go through the barrage of questions from the French media, from the American media, from the European media, from the Asian media. You need to sit down at that podium. Do as we tell you. Mm. Let alone the fact that whatever message she wants to get out there, she doesn't have to go through the media. Because mm. we have, she has Instagram. Where she posted this post here. She has Twitter. That statement. Mm -hmm. Facebook. Yeah. Um, Players Tribune. Mm -hmm. You have all these different media outlets, even though they're not terrestrial media, but she can go to all these digital forms of media and state whatever her presence of mind was during a match. Because mm -hmm. I can empathize with the athlete going up to those podiums and listening to some of these dull, banal sophomore questions after you just played your heart out for I right mean, and then you want me to recall what was your opponent's mindset <laughs> from people that never played the game yeah in the third set down triple set point what was your point like you ask stupid questions you get stupid answers like i couldn't be i couldn't i couldn't be in a, i could not be in that position i really couldn't mm -hmm. but i'm glad 
that she uh, asserted herself and said, okay, since you want me to do this, I'm going to hit you right where it hurts. Mm -hmm. Not knowing if she did that deliberately, Mm -hmm. but she hit him right where it hurts. She's a draw. Yeah, and she's looking out for herself, uh, for her mental health. And who would and and who would haphazardly just say, "Yeah, I'm, I don't think she would play about something like that." No, and even if she, she shouldn't be made to do that. No one should be. If they're not mentally, physically, emotionally up for that, you should not trot them out and make them sit there and do it. Unless you just want to go the Marshawn Lynch route, I'm just here not to get fine. I'm just here so I won't get fine. Do you do you want that because that what it that's what it could become, and then what? And, I, and hey, I get it. Journalists have a job, but as a journalist, you can she also write art articles. The, they the media. Why don't needs you have her. a one on one interview with her? The media needs her. Absolutely, she doesn't need the media. The the, fr- the French Open right now needs her. You don't have anyone other than Serena. And if Serena takes the approach that did she play this time around? Who Serena? She's she hurt. got bounced. I think in the fourth. Three. I thought she was hurt. Because I, I thought she had a beef with with them too. Because of, she's always had beef with them. With well, the no, French, the, the cat suit incident mm-hmm. would turn out to be. Uh, spe- she was showing off too suit. much, too much curves. We're not used to that over here. Yeah, but there was a reason for what she wore with the when she wore it because mm-hmm. you know she came. You know, I didn't realize at the time until I read about it later on that well, the suit was specifically made because of the you know she just gave birth and she had blood clots. Correct. So she was working through and you know yeah. As, I'm on my feet all day long, so I know about that. Sh- you yeah. Know? So I'm I, I wear like, yeah, put the to knee, yeah, you know, compression. So I know what that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, kudos to Naomi. I hope that she comes back when she's ready, and I hope the W what is it WTA WTA. I hope they got I hope, hit in the pocket. I hope I'm they get they hit. Most certainly got hit hard. hard in the pocket. Yes, because I'm certain plenty of advertisers. Mm-hmm. Pulled out. Who, who, so who's Naomi left? Took out. Who's left? I don't know who else is there. Sloan Stevens. <sighs> um, the other. Um, I know about the black tennis players um, yeah. in South Florida. Sloan Stevens is one of them. There was another one. Um, Coco. Oh yeah, yeah. Golf. But Coco anybody Golf. on on that level? But who, I don't who's know going to bring anybody in else. I knew who Naomi Osaka was. I knew yeah. who Serena was, and I knew who Venus was. And this goes back to what I was saying before. You know, I'm glad that she did that, and I hope a lot of other black entertainers and athletes take that same approach. Stop letting them trot you out to get ratings, and they don't care about you. Just like these uh, black entertainers going to the Oscars and the Grammys and never winning the best for overall, just in your genre, but never overall. But they have you sitting on the front row because they need the the advertisements and the ratings in there, and they want you to perform. But you're not getting that best album or that best actor or best actress or best record of the year or anything. No, you will get best hip hop or best R&B or whatever, but you're not going to get that one. But they trot you out because you're the biggest star, but they're not going to give that to you. Mm-hmm. Same thing with, you know, the athletes. Listen, they, they want you there, but only if you play and tap dance to what they want. So I hope a, a lot of people. Shucking and jiving. Yeah. She already had built up equity. She doesn't need any. She doesn't. Them, she, really, she could retire right now exactly. and be, be fine for the rest of her life. Yeah. So She don't need them. Um, so big ups to her. Shame I on support the her. Open and all the other uh, federations out there. Yeah, I, I would, she, hit, hit them where it hurts. Continue to hit them In where it pockets. hurts. And they'll be crawling back to bring her. Because I, I, hey. Mm-mm. So thank you guys. Uh Great episode. I enjoyed it. Um, before we give our song of the week, I have to say something quickly to say that I was wrong. I went on a rant about, I think it was episode 19, all rappers sound the same, the music stuff. I went on a rant. Well, I think it was last week, whenever, when I went out to your home, John, um, I, they had released on that Friday the new Migos album, Culture 3. I made a remark about the Migos saying they were Bone Thugs and Harmony without the harmony. I, As a man, you have to be man enough to apologize when you make a mistake, when you're wrong. Mm-hmm. I was wrong. This new Migos album, Culture 3, is probably one of the best rap albums I have heard in a very very long time 
Listen. I don't know what these young men have done to step up their game. The rap, the one that they don't, you know, you know about Quavo and you know about Offset. The one that you don't really know about Takeoff, that boy raps his ass off. Okay, that boy goes hard. Do you hear me? I take back everything I said about the Migos. Culture Three is one of the best. It was better than J Cole album. Wow. Hot take. Woo. I'm there. Wow. I said it, and I'll stand by it. I said it. Right. And I will stand by it. Culture three. Wait, 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 wait. This is nineteen tracks, man. Bruh, that's, that's longer. Than we most. listen. We we. I turned it on when we got off the four seventeen on I four to come out there, and you know how traffic hit right there. Right. I got to maybe track twelve, I think, and then when we left, we finished it out. The best culture. rap album, Culture three. Because they have culture one, culture two. This is culture three, okay. the trilogy. The them boys they open up with a song called Avalanche, and they turn they they flip the Papa was a Rolling Stone beat. Oh my god! And I was just reading this morning where Quavo show, shared a text message from Jay Z saying. Y'all boys came with it with the Avalanche song. That's the first song. The first song is that 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 song Avalanche where they flip the Papa was a Rolling Stone beat. I ain't never heard nothing like that. Then the next song they did with Drake. Oh my God! Let me tell you something. That uh, as a man, you have to apologize. I am sorry to take off, Offset, and Quavo. You guys brought the fire with this album. Culture Three is one of my favorite albums. It, yeah, I said it. I'm going to stand on it. Better than J Cole. Damn. My song of the week. You better have some substance with that, though. Oh, it's it's plenty of substance. All right, all right, go ahead. That's what I'm saying. Them boys came lyrically. Them boys came with it. Okay. My song of the week is the Migos, featuring Drake. Having our way, and I think it's just him and Takeoff on that song. I, I'm gonna stand by what I say, John. You got a long ride ahead of you. I suggest you turn it on and give me your feedback. Culture three, Migos. That's all I got to say. What's y'all song of the week? I can't sit and reflect on that one for a minute. <laughs> okay. I, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Be Me Up Scotty, Nicki Minaj featuring uh, Drake yeah. and like Lil that. Wayne. I like that song. I do For like a song. while. This is the first time in a long time I actually heard Lil Wayne rap like Lil Wayne. Mm. And Drake wasn't singing. Mm -hmm. He was actually spitting. So for all three of them to be on the track, Spitting, spitting, yeah, and not whining or complaining or. Wayne had busted out every blue moon. I don't know. He birthed a generation that I, I, I hate him for. Yeah, but that's what that, that brings me. Yeah, that's why I appreciate it more because he actually went back to, you know, pre, um, lollipop and pre fireman and all that kind of stuff. He went back to Carter too. Mm. Carter mm -hmm. one, Carter two. Okay, and he was actually he was actually spitting. Okay, yeah. Well, if you think Drake spit on that song, beat me up. You wait till you hear "Having Our Way." Okay, I'm, I, I got it queued up. So okay. as soon as I hit the car, have you heard "Avalanche" yet? No, I haven't. I Ooh. I haven't listened to any okay. of of this new album. So. Okay, I'm gonna play it when we get out, just a little bit. Okay, um, John, you done recovered? Yeah, because I can't let like, the kids listen to it. Yeah, no, you can't. Ain't ready for it yet. Yeah, so uh, Pharrell Williams featuring Kanye West, uh, number one. Number one. Smashing. Yeah. Off the charts. <laughs> Classic. Did, quick story, real quick, and we're going to get out of here. Um, the, Pharrell, the, 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 the Pharrell song, um, Frontin'. Mm hmm. Guess who he wrote that song for? Who he wrote that song? Mm-hmm. 
He didn't write it for himself. He ended up singing it because the person declined the song. Prince. He wrote that. That's why he sings like that in that falsetto voice, because he's imitating Prince. He wrote it. He told his story. He wrote it for Prince and Prince almost took it. But he's like, nah, I don't want it. Can you imagine Prince on that song with Jay-Z? <laughs> that blew my mind when he did that interview. Prince doing fronting. Oh my gosh. Now I'm going to have to re listen to that song. And yes, it just imagine Prince with his. Yeah, yeah, John just moved his whole microphone away. <laughs> yeah, he specifically wrote that track for Prince. He gave it to him, and Prince almost took it. Then Prince, at the last minute, said, nah. He would have murdered that song. Oh my God. Why, the question is why did he Prince reject it? Because he's Prince. Because he wouldn't have control of it? Uh, no, I'm sure he would have had control of it. I don't think Prince really cared for people writing for him, probably. That's probably what that's it was. That, that's probably what it was. Yeah. But How he, many people did write for him? Mm, I can't think of any. Not many. Bro, Royal probably would have given him. I, yeah, I would I would say here, this Whatever is you, you own wanted. it. You Yeah, just let them know I wrote it for you, but you own everything. Yeah, but I, that, that's probably the thing. Probably, yeah. yeah. I just, yeah. Hey, guys. Please take the time out to like us, share us, rate us on whatever you listen to. If they can, you can rate us or put a star. Um, please take the time to rate and review us. Um, please go to our Instagram page, Short Desk Podcast, Facebook page, Short Desk Podcast. We also on Twitter, the Short Desk Podcast. Thank you so much. Download as much as you can with what you like. We're going to keep growing, 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 growing. This has been the Short Desk Podcast. Holla. At your I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot.